Thank you, Madam Moderator. What a joy it is to, uh, to be with you and to follow up on the incredible work of my predecessor, Dean Lundgren, known to so many of you for so many years, faithfully serving. On the first day, about 10 months ago, that I joined Covenant Offices, Gary Walter actually stopped me right outside the building. And he said, there is one thing we didn't mention. He said, uh, we have become aware of a unrelenting passion for East Coast sports teams on the second floor that has been molded by Dean Lundgren over 23 years. Well, the story's not over. So I got up to my office and there was a Boston Bruin sitting on my chair, which is fine because over the last 12 months or so, it's been easy enough to put that aside and uh, it might be the only way for the Bruin to get closer to the Stanley Cup now in Chicago. <laughs> there was a Red Sox hat hanging on my door, which is fine enough because the Chicago Cubs are now playing quite well under the auspices of a former Red Sox executive. And our gift of Billy Buckner always stands proud. And lastly, the Patriots. What can you say about the Patriots? But I would say the most difficult thing for me in the last six months, I noticed about three months into the role that I was, I was actually having difficulty breathing. Um, I was sitting in my office and I, I didn't know quite what to do and so I went up to talk to Commissioner Walter and we did a little forensic exam of the building and we actually found a series of text messages that were sent to our building staff where Dean had actually instructed that the air pressure in my office be adjusted. <laughs> so that it would only work for him in that setting. So all of these things we've resolved and uh, happy to bring a little more Cubby Blue into the presentation that's coming around to see you today. In all seriousness, what a joy it's been to serve. We uh, thank you. We view ourselves as structure builders. We may not be on the front line doing ministry, but so many faithful people work in our office and around the denomination to hopefully build ministry structures that make ministry more effective and more sustainable. And so what a joy it is to work on your behalf. We give you great thanks. You uh, should pay attention to agenda item 22 in your books. And also, uh, I wanted to note the handout that's being sent around, which contains context on the 2016 mission and ministry budget on which we will vote tomorrow at a time certain. So I wanted to give you some extra time to look at that. And it also incorporates context of different ministry activities and uh, uh, we'll be delighted uh, in the hallways and over the weekend to spend time with you with questions around that as well. So there are two primary financial reports that we offer at each gather session. One is a, a look back and so this year we look at the financial results of 2014. And again, the handout that's coming around to you is more the focus of tomorrow, although you will see on the large sheet the 2014 actual results, so you can pay attention to that. Remember that our fiscal year ends in January of each year. So fiscal 2014 actually ended in January of 2015. Secondly, tomorrow we'll look forward and now on the recommendation of the Covenant Office's leadership team, uh, the Finance Committee, and the full executive board, we have a 2016 mission and ministry budget to recommend. That is contained on the large uh, printout that you see that is being handed around. You'll also note two audits that are contained in uh, your delegate books. And while I know it is not the favorite thing for many of you to do, I do, over the years, want to talk more about the content of those audits. Uh, the consolidated audit that you'll see in there for the Covenant Church represents the most comprehensive view of our financial position, inclusive of operating activities, directed project ministries, um, and the host of affiliate relationships that go well beyond that. And so I'll make some observations on that. 
Lastly, you'll note that the Covenant Pension Plan audit is in draft form, and I want to give you assurance that there is no issue with the audit, that in fact every year we are always waiting on certain final valuations from our private capital managers uh, that we don't often get until the summer. And so I'll make some observations on that as well. I also, for many of you who may be new delegates, I want to give you context on the four areas that my team uh, does ministry in. So much like a local church, we prepare and manage all of the activities related to the operating budget. Much as you would, we make commitments for ministry and mission investment, and then we rely in a, in a large sense on the faithfulness of the church to help us fund those activities throughout the year. So the church takes real economic risk in the operating budget. Much like a local church, we also have an incredible array of uh, directed or project missions uh, where seven plus million dollars on an average uh, year is raised in support of a host of missions, which you'll see in the middle part of the large sheet that's handed out to you. Um, and I want to make two observations on that. One, the church doesn't take the same economic risk on these project missions because they're able to put into ministry only what they raise. But secondly, like a local church, it would be impossible to think about the reach of these project ministries without the presence of the local church, and in our case, the presence of the denomination. So you'll see a yellow box on the right side of that large sheet, which indicates the infrastructure and the mission support for many of these project missions are provided by our core mission priorities. We run the pension and benefit plans, of which many of you are aware, and I'll have some comments on. Lastly, um, I want to start to have us think about more than the $25 million budget that we'll talk about tomorrow. Um, we have over a billion dollars of extended enterprise activity and mission that is accomplished through North Park and the seminary, Covenant Ministries of Benevolence, Covenant Trust Company, National Covenant Properties, and the church is the sole member, directly or indirectly, of all that activity. In many cases, we've been responsible throughout our history for the formation of those ministries, the care of those ministries, and their reach is remarkable. But if I could leave you with one um, theme today, it will be that I think we can do better. I think we can do better as the church in supporting our affiliate ministries and reimagining the way that we talk to each other, the way that we share synergies, the way that we reduce administrative costs and allocate more dollars into mission and ministry. And so I will tell you, in my first 10 months, I've just been absolutely delighted about the spirit that, uh, that all of our colleagues in ministry around the broader covenant economy are entering into that. And you've heard examples of that today, and you will throughout the weekend. If we look at 2014 specifically, uh, and you may not be able to see this on the screen, but again, on the last page of your handout, you'll see the 2014 actual column. Um, you will note that uh, for the fiscal year recently ended, we ended up 6.7% under budget on expenses, on mission expenses. And you'll note in the blue boxes at the right here, 92% of that savings came from two mission priorities. Serve globally, start and strengthen churches. Start and strengthen churches is uh, really wholly dependent on the cadence and the timing of church plant appropriations. And so last year, based on, based on that timing, those appropriations were down. In serve globally, interestingly, um, a I don't know what percentage, but the vast amount of donations that come in in support of long-term missionaries, which are all in our operating budget, are U.S. dollar donations. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as the U.S. dollar strengthened last year, you can imagine the 30 or 40 currencies that we're translating those dollars into, and we actually were able to incur enormous financial savings um, on the strength of the U.S. dollar. Now, in many years, including 2009, that goes against us, and so we have to be prepared for that. But that was a wonderful savings for Serve Globally. 
The other thing you'll notice is our administrative costs were held nicely in check last year, about 2.8% down from budget. And another trend in light of what uh, I just mentioned is um, one of, one of uh, our real areas of focus is to continue to move more dollars into core mission and ministry and away from general administration. So I hope to continue to show that trend. Let me step back there for a minute. On the income side, you'll notice that church giving was 3.6% under budget, but it was actually up year over year about 30 basis points. And the reality as we present the budget tomorrow is we're presenting a budget that has almost half a million dollars of increase in church giving over the 2014 actual level. We'll talk more about the context for that, but you should know that 65% of everything that happens in our mission and ministry budget, uh, actually more than that if you include directed ministries, comes from your generosity both at the, at the local church level and as individuals, and it is, it is obviously the lifeblood of, of our support. And so I want you to know how grateful we are and that uh, we will do everything possible to continue to cultivate your trust in us. Individual giving was up 3.2% to budget. It was up 35% year over year. So a remarkable trend of uh, generosity from you in support of our mission and ministry, and we are uh, deeply grateful. The most important thing on this page is that because we are able to hold our expenses materially down, you'll see that our bequest transfer line was down almost 70%. Uh, Ann Wiesbrock, uh, who so wonderfully manages Covenant Trust Company, uh, would tell you that the overall trends of bequests to many Covenant enterprises has been trending down. And we have to reduce our reliance on pulling bequests in on an annual basis. It's wonderful if it's there, but it obviously is lumpy, it's difficult to predict, and so we have to reduce our reliance on that on an annual basis, and we were able to do that dramatically this year and, uh, and also uh, still uh, result in a modest surplus of $38,000. So a good financial report, I would say, we obviously wanna keep our ministry commitments, particularly in planting churches, and so um, uh, all the more reason we'll need your support to do that as we talk about the mission and ministry budget tomorrow. A few other comments. Uh, Bethany Benefits, if you look on the, the back of your delegate binder, you'll see a great advertisement for Bethany. Here's what I would tell you. Um, all of you are living through the new realities of the ACA and uh, our medical rate increases for uh, all of you who are covered in the last two years have been 0% and 3.9%, but uh, inclusive of a premium holiday that we offered just this month, the effective uh, rate uh, change this year was actually down 4%. So what you should know is our medical rates are actually below the level they were in 2012, and my prediction is that what you'll see uh, in the next 12 months, and you're already reading about it, is potential for 10 to 20% premium increases in many ACA and exchange plans. So my ask of you is, is simply this. Um, we know the cost of Bethany is, is not expensive in notional terms when you purchase uh, insurance, but we all purchase insurance knowing that we may not be well. And I can tell you that uh, you would be very proud to see how we care for pastors who are sick and uh, lay workers who are sick. And I'd ask you to look at the value of uh, the holistic economy of Bethany. In other words, if you get sick, what will happen to your out-of-pocket obligations? And you will see that our plan, while not the cheapest on day one, is an exceptionally strong plan. And, uh, and our, um, our care for the rate increases uh, has been trending really well, and so we'd encourage you to stop by the booth, see Christina Kempe is here, and see how we can uh, continue to minister uh, to you through Bethany. The pension plan, uh, which you have the audit of, remains 103% funded, and the only point I wanna make on this is um, we've actually, uh, for those of you who are fascinated with actuarial science, um, 
and there must be one. Um, <laughs> We were, we were actually able, we're a church plan, we are not beholden by ERISA and other standards that corporate plans are, are uh, predicated on, but it's always good governance to move closer to market uh, assumptions. And in this year, you'll notice that we lowered our discount rate and we uh, moved to new mortality tables which better ref reflect the true liability of the plan, and that's very good news. It basically means we are reasonably well-funded and we're reasonably well-funded on a liability that is a truer estimate of what our real liability is. You should also know that with 10 past or present or pending ministers in my own family, I constantly live in the balance of the uh, demand for kind of enhanced benefits, but also uh, looking at the long-term sustainability of the plan. And so know that we live in that tension along with you. And then finally, in 2014, $7 million, uh, which again, you'll see in the middle section of that large fold-out page of uh, directed giving into ministry, just a remarkable testament to your continued generosity among us. A few comments on the audit. It's a clean opinion. It means that nothing uh, is, uh, uh, everything is materially presenting our financial position in good order. There are no major audit adjustments that were required. And generally, I think very positive comments about uh, Michelle and Elliot and the people who wonderfully managed this process for us as a part of our team. You will note on page two of the audit, on the balance sheet, we were able to materially increase our cash position we were able to pay off all of our lines of credit uh, with National Covenant properties, uh, where in the past we have had to draw uh, to finance the uh, mission and ministry budget. And um, in addition, Gary mentioned increasing board-designated reserves. Now, I don't want anyone to think uh, that we are trying to build uh, a mountain of cash. Our goal is to fund mission and ministry, but it's also to fund it over the long term. And as you look at the billion dollars of extended ECC economy, we actually take on a lot of direct and indirect risk um, in that process. Um, one item alone before I even leave the fourth floor, we have $78 million in loan guarantees to church real estate facilities with National Covenant Properties, and you'll see that in the footnotes of the audit report. So it is our job to ensure long-term structural investment in ministry, and we're pleased that we've been at least able to start that process. And you'll see a number of those obligations in the church, obligations with NCP, future obligations for church plants that we've made, obligations for benefits and insurance uh, that extend throughout the affiliate enterprise. So I just, I would also like to leave you just with a few themes that you'll hear uh, from our team over the coming years. Again, first, a desire for us to be mindful of the long term and to increase board-designated reserves, uh, both for ministry investment as well as to sustain any number of risks that could come our way in the future. It's our job to look at risk management in a holistic way. Secondly, to sustain the long-term health of the benefit plans. We are very mindful of um, uh, the plight of many retirees who we see who are really struggling financially, and it's always on our mind to enhance pension benefits. Um, at the same time, we have to live in the balance that, uh, uh, of the stories that we've seen uh, in our own city of Chicago and around uh, the country, and we are never going to do anything to sacrifice the long-term uh, viability of these plans, and so that's a tension that we live within more percentage investment into mission and ministry. And one of the real areas, I think, of opportunity is for us to work in concert with the finance and benefit and insurance and risk management and other teams of our wider ECC economies and affiliates to do better together what we often try to do two separately uh, today. And so uh, one of my uh, really great joys is to work with the talented people in the host of ECC affiliates to reimagine that process together. So again, blessings this weekend. It'll be a joy to, uh, to meet you in the hallways. Thank you for the many ways in which you've welcomed me to the team. 
And uh, Madam Moderator, that concludes my report. Thank you, Paul, for your first report in this role.